My lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome back once more to Transport Fever 2 on our hard mode playthrough using a randomly generated map that the game has thrown together for us. We are starting on a little bit of scenery work that I did off camera between episodes and I've put together just a little bit of a, a farm here as we can see. Obviously it's not a functioning farm, it does not provide any grain or any output, it's just for decoration. And I've situated it along the side of our rail line that we put in last episode, which is shipping the bricks down through to Portishead, which is over here. As we can see, we've got a few high rises starting to spring up in Portishead. And if we just swing over to the left, we've got the same thing happening in West Ham as well. If we are lucky, we might see a train pass by during this little introduction, but I don't think there's one coming, so... We're not going to see a train run past this farm, but yes, as I can say, it's just a few assets that I've put down here just to bring the map to life. It just prevents it looking as empty as it did previously. Nothing too extravagant, and I've also put in just a little hamlet here. Again, this is not a city or town that needs any goods or services. It's just for decoration, just to bring the map to life. So, shall we bring up the user interface then and see the current state of affairs? At 27 million in the bank, cash flow of 3 million, as you can see there if you hover over it. We have an income of 8 and maintenance fees of 5 per year. We've got the date paused at the moment. Obviously, I did pause it while I was putting all this down, so I didn't unlock anything new between episodes. So we can restart the date now. And what I think we're going to do today is, I know I talked about maybe getting the tools supplied into West Ham at the end of the last episode. But I've had a change of heart, or a change of mind, and I'm going to bring in some food to Portishead. And I'm going to use this food factory here. It makes sense, it's very local. And we've got the expenditure icons on there, let's just get rid of those, there we go. And the way we're going to run this line is, we're going to make use of this river. So, we'll have some sort of port here to collect the wheat from this farm. That will then ship the wheat... Where do we want to take it to? We could ship the wheat. Oh, in fact, we could transport the wheat via a train to this livestock farm. And then we can drop off the livestock very easily, probably by road vehicle, to our meat processing plant here. Obviously, I've had corrections in the comments due to my misunderstanding as to what this symbol means. It's basically an or symbol so you can supply one cow one livestock or two units of fish and either whichever you provide will give you one unit of meat and then with that meat we could ship it over here and this one unit of meat will give you two units of food or of course we could use one unit of coffee or one unit of alcohol now we do have a distillery all the way up here at Yoxel, which converts grain into alcohol two to one ratio as we can see so we could either ship the grain all the way up this river although it's quite a long journey and have that converted to alcohol the ship could then load up with the alcohol head back down drop the alcohol at the food processing plant here before making the short journey over the river to begin its run again and pick up the grain the food would then be transported by road vehicle into port, he said nice and simply. No need for any extra train lines here. Or as I said, we could do it the other way, where we get grain into this livestock farm, livestock into this meat processing plant, and then the meat into the food processing plant. I think just to spread our company across as much as the map as we can, we might use this alcohol distillery up here. It is not going to be the most efficient option, but I have tested this line at least, the grain up to here, and it is profitable, providing you have enough, in fact even with just one ship overall, it is profitable, but your frequency of your deliveries hovers around 60 minutes, which is about 5 years time in game. But the ship does make enough money per delivery to cover the operating costs when it's not profitable for the intervening four years. However, if we just have several ships on, 
we're going to have more regular income. So let's get cracking with that. So we want a cargo harbour, and we'll go for a large cargo harbour. And we only need one terminal out here. There's nothing else happening here aside from the collection of the grain from the farm. And we'll set it round about there. And then what I'm going to do here is just very quickly smooth this little bit of terrain off here so we can get a decent road connection and then we'll obviously blend out the little hill there once we're finished we can just use a small road for this no trucks are going to run down here at any point it is just to activate and give us a working connection between the farm and the port let's have a look how does that look yeah you still get these weird ridges and undulations i think that's as good oh god yes as i was about to say i do think that's as good as we're gonna get it it'll do it's not the best but as long as it works and then if we bring this road up here that should provide an active connection between the two indeed it does so that's working as intended and then as i said while we're in the area we'll just very quickly smooth off that bit there there we go so there's the port is said port. I think what we'll rename that to Grain Port, just so we know what we're working with. And then we need a port all the way up here over at Yoxel Distillery. And now let's have a look at the terrain on the river's edge. I think if we have the port around about here, we could then connect in, and that should be close enough to provide a working connection to the distillery without any intervening trucks being required so let's try that and again we'll set it back we could set it there although that does look a bit odd so I'm going to set it there and then do the connection via the road manually like we did down there in Portishead and again just smooth some of this off there just get a nice flat connection with the road now we can again just use a small road we're not actually using this for vehicle access it is just to bring it all into the network and there we go we have the connection there so this is the Yoxel distillery port and then the last one is over at the food processing plant over the river from port is said I'm not sure I like how that road extends out into the river there nor this bit here but we can manually adjust that with a bit of terrain modification just to make that look a little bit more natural let's bump the size up and the strength and what in fact what we could do is just stretch it out a bit there we go and then blend oh it's just undone that hasn't it let's stretch it out like that it looks a bit odd at the moment granted but then if we just take the edge off there that's better so we've eaten into the river a little bit there but that's okay and yes as i was saying that's an airport that's not what we need we need a port over here and this is where the dist the distillery the alcohol will be dropped off like so again just sort that out there get us a small road connection up into that road there and what we're also going to need to do is bring a road alongside the farm because we don't have any connection at the moment can we just delete that tiny bit of road there yes we can and then we should be able to snap in there and we have a connection and this will be portis head uh da -da 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 -da, food port sounds a bit weird i'll try and come up with a better name for that i'm not happy with that name but for the time being that's the wrong tool yes for the time being it will do at least you know where it's working at and what it's servicing so that's the three ports set up. So what we can do now is we can buy ourselves a dry dock or a shipyard, if you will. Let's put that, should we put it here, just next to this bridge? And then perhaps a little bit later on, we could do a bit of scenery work around here to make this a bit more industrial looking. We haven't blocked ourselves in on our train line, so we know we haven't. So that's all good. And I'm assuming this bridge is navigable, or this water is navigable under this bridge. It should be, because it's a map-generated bridge. Yes, it is. 
although it does look a little bit low so we might want to tweak that bridge depending on how much clipping through the underside of the bridge our ships are doing we'll check that in a moment we can now set up the line for this so we're going from the port here we want to be fully loaded and we want to wait for a full load regardless of how long it's going to take us and we're picking up the grain then we're heading up to Yoxel distillery port here we want a half load I th think if we do it this way this should work and again I would like it to be fully loaded and wait to it wait for it to be fully loaded and we're unloading the grain and we are loading the whiskey or the alcohol and if we set 50 percent and then set that to that then as soon as he's hit 50 percent he should leave the reason we've set it to 50 percent is because we're dropping off two to one so we have to we're using two units of grain for one unit of alcohol so we'll with one unload we're not going to get 100 percent capacity if we drop off 100 we're only going to get 50. I'm sure that makes sense and i've just taught you how to suck eggs there but there we are anyway let's continue the final leg of the journey is coming down here and at this point we are not loading anything but we are unloading the alcohol that we've just picked up over at yoxel dropping it off there and then the ship will go back into it all over again we shall call this line food production and this is in fact let's call it food production shipping just so we know it's on the water and this we'll just call it portis head because even though it does extend up to yoxel most of its time in terms of how many ports is in port is said two out of the three as we can see we're food producing so let's go for the ever so slightly lighter shade of orange there although i've just lost the line that's better now in terms of how many ships we want i'm going to say we want large ships and we want to be able to carry in fact well they carry all you carry whiskey yes you carry food in fact you don't need to carry food you carry grain, yes. So these are the two that we're loading, aren't we? We're loading grain, unloading the grain, loading the alcohol, unloading the alcohol, and then heading back to the first port, empty. So you cover those two. I say we'll go for this one. It's only marginally more expensive in maintenance per year, as we can see, about 50,000. It's got 10 more capacity, and it is faster. Only three miles per hour faster, but when you're traveling such a distance, those three miles an hour will add up. And this should have a much greater frequency than the Dunara Castlewood. So we'll go for the Klondike, even though it doesn't look like a cargo ship. It looks more like a passenger paddle steamer, as we can see. And we're going to go for four of those. And we'll see what that does. That's going to cost four and a half million. Let's colour them the same colour as the line they're running on. And we're going to assign these one at a time. So food production, Porty said. And then once this ship gets around a quarter of the way through the total line journey, which will be perhaps this little narrow span of water here, then we're going to set the second one on the way. And then just repeat the process for ship number three and number four. So what we'll do, we'll speed the game up, but we'll slow the date speed to compensate just to one quarter. We don't want to motor through a couple of eras just while waiting for these ships to space out. We should see, yes we can indeed, start seeing food now being produced at the farm here by Portis Head. So that's all good. Another thing I've done off camera just while that ship takes care of business is I've had to extend our two stone trains. We now have eight carriages or eight wagons per locomotive. That's because this Brickworks has expanded off camera. It's now level four, as we can see. And this has triggered increased production over here. I think it was 200 initially or 300. It's now up to 400. So we weren't quite keeping up. We're still not keeping up, as we can see. The platform does fill up. But we're keeping this Brickworks very well supplied. In fact, we can test that. We'll keep an eye on this number and just keep an eye on this train as it arrives. 
and hopefully there should be a small surplus left in store while this train gets alongside. There we go, we've timed that just right. Okay, so we've unlocked the Class A3 Flying Scotsman. Very beautiful train, as well as the Dornia Merker. I'm not sure about the pronunciation on that one. Now, this obviously is tempting, the Flying Scotsman. You wouldn't have it on a freight train, I don't believe. It'd look a bit too weird. But we could start thinking about our first passenger line. Now, one self-imposed rule that I'm trying to stick to is that our lines must all interconnect. So, for example, talking about the passenger line, I couldn't, for example, start the line in Bakewell down to, say, Burton, because that would be one line, and then we have this line here. So, if we wanted to run from Bakewell to Burton, for example, what I would have to do, due to my own self-imposed rule, is have this line at least connect into Bakewell and then do the main passenger line between the two. I hope that makes sense. So basically, this depot should be able to reach every line on the map. That's not to say we're only using the one depot, of course, but I just think it's better if you expand from a central point rather than having a line here, a line here, a line here, a line here, and then trying to connect them all together nicely. However, that being said, we could have a passenger line here from Portishead to Market Raisin. Raisin. Obviously, it's not raisin as in the dried fruit. Um, because we have the line here anyway, so what we would do is we'd have a just a connection line skirt around this farm. And if we had our passenger station to the north of Portishead, as we're looking at it now, that would be able to give us that connectivity between the two. Not that anything would ever run down here, really. It's just a, a connection point. And then we would be able to just put a straight easy line in over to Market Raisin. The Flying Scotsman perhaps would be a little bit overkill for such a short journey, if I'm honest. So perhaps instead we could head out to Nuneaton. Obviously Nuneaton has got some supply here, so it has grown from its initial starting point. So we do have more passengers available to get onto our line in Nuneaton than we do in Portishead. And then what we could do is Market Raisin and Portishead could just be connected by a intercity tram system like we have between these two. It's an option, it's something worth considering and weighing up. So if we wanted to do that then, because we, we don't want to just sit here and wait for the ship to start moving, we'd like to do some other things in the background at the same time. Speaking of which, ship number two can now set off. So yes, we could have our passenger station up here. And then it would be a simple run over, jump the river, and then through into Nuneaton. And if we had our station in Nuneaton somewhere around here, that would leave us in the ideal direction for expansion up to Blythe and Bakewell if we wanted, and maybe further south to Market Raisin and down into this area of the map as well. We wouldn't block ourselves in, so to speak, by having it facing this way, where the only other direction is into the void. I'm quite tempted to make a start on that. I really am. So let's, in fact, let's do it. Let's make that start. So let's go for a UK generic passenger station. Now I'm going to say that Port is said is, I mean, it's quite central on the map. In fact, it's probably the most central town on the map. So we'll nominate this as our capital, if you will. So we're going to want quite a large train station for this and we'll have blue. So if we start off with say four tracks, uh, we want high speed, we want long canopy length, and we want catenary. So the platform length, let's bump that up to, say, how does 320 look? That looks quite imposing and impressive. So if we were to have that, say, there, we can easily afford this, 27 million in the bank, just before I made the purchase. So if that's where our passenger station would be, we could then have a passenger bus ex bus and metro exchange just here to get the passengers into Portishead and vice versa. 
So let's put that down as well. So we want, so we've got the new road type, so that's something to bear in mind. We want a bus and tram station, 30 meters. And I'll say we'll go for four, in fact, yeah, we'll go for four platforms. Like that. Let's then configure the opposite entrance there. This is not tramified or electrified yet. We can always upgrade it a little bit later on. But just to get things started, this should do quite nicely. And then connecting like that. Okay, that's not having that, is it? There we go, that's better. And then what we want to do is just this terrain out here, just flatten some of this off before blending it together. That looks better. So that's where that would go. As I said, we could then have a line that for now just connects into here to get our train over here. Although we'll probably just have a separate depot for our passenger lines. And then what we would do, if you smooth some of that, in fact, let's just flatten that entirely. Keep it level with the, uh, the track height. Yeah, that'll do. How do you look the up? Well, that's fine. The opposite side, that's not too bad at all. Let's quickly check where our second ship is. It's almost there. So what we'd want now is we'd need a depot for this. And if we have the depot set off to one side, sort of like... I set it back a ways, sort of like there. High speed track, yes. Catenary, yes. We'll have the depot, like, like I said, like that. So it's not directly in line. So our lines would come this way and this would just link in. And we'll use high speed trains for... Or high speed tracks for our passenger lines. Don't Well, we don't need to use them for our freight lines because... I don't believe any freight wagons over ever top 75 miles per hour. So we'll do that. And then we want to connect in like that. The speed doesn't really matter. It's not a service line. Well, it is a service line, but it's not a line that's going to have any lines running on it, on it if that makes sense. So then we have platform access and we're gonna have to keep these quite short so these are gonna be slow junctions which is unfortunate okay can't quite do that well let's try that again there we go so that gives us connectivity to platforms one and two and then from here again we're leaving this quite short to get it as short as possible and hopefully we have enough just to slip in a small diamond here. Just about. Got very lucky there. There we go. And that's platforms 3 and 4 now accessible from this depot as well. I guess we can now release another ship. In fact, we've missed the point. Got too distracted there laying in the depot. Where's our shipyard? There it is. It was hiding. So number 3, set off on your way. So yes, this is a, well, this will be Portis Head straight, just Portis Head. And then we'll play out our tracks over towards the direction of Nuneaton. So what we want to do, we want to keep these nice and straight. It will lead to some quite extensive terrain modification as we can see, but that's fine. They're all straight, perfect, like so. This road we'll have to delete. It's not an active intertown connection, so nobody's gonna to be too annoyed about that. We can rebuild it later, obviously. Okay, now you can start climbing if you wish. So you're going from so you're climbing by 13 meters there. So if we stretch even further that spreads the length of the gradient which is going to make it a lot shallower and I think that's far enough because we don't need to start turning at any point between here and here so let's lay that down followed by the second track and then at this point we'll have these two lines 
slowly make their way over and merge into the existing or the primary two lines that we have here. So let's lay them down at ready. So that's track number three and number four. And then you come in like that and like that. And then what we need to do is just connect these into our main section of track. 80 miles an hour, that's a decent enough speed. And then you should snap in, or perhaps you won't. How does that all look? Doesn't look too, too offensive. And in like so. And then if, in fact, no, we'll keep that as it is. And then we'll just have a couple of diamonds a little bit closer to the station, say from here. And here we can make the diamonds a little bit faster. Let's go for 60. I don't think any of our trains upon leaving the station will have hit 60 miles an hour before they hit this junction. But obviously they could be doing over 60 by the time they're heading into Portishead. At which point they'd start slowing down anyway for arrival in the station. So there we go. Now we can start putting some signals in. As we can see we now have the modern era signals. Plenty to choose from as we can see. Including obviously the vanilla default electronic signals. But how about we go for something like... Well I guess they are... Uh, German or Austrian. How about a four aspect signal? One way, yes. Auto signal, yes. So we are left hand drive, so let's have our signal say there and let's get that level if we can. Looks about level to me. There we go, and they've positioned quite nicely to protect the junction as well. And then we'll do the same this way, but we'll just drop that to 300 metres. Let's get that level as well if we can, right about there. Perhaps, yeah, it's going to have to be there. There we go. Now we want no for auto signal because we like these here and here to protect access into the station. And then, to enable our trains to start moving forward, rather than waiting on the platform, we'll put some two-way signals there. There we go. We want a one-way signal just before this junction here. So, there we go. And that's, that'll protect anything crossing over. And now we can continue with our track. How far has our third ship got? Pretty much spot on. Good timing. So number four, on you go. Have any of our ships made it back yet? I guess not because we make them wait, don't we? Why have you not picked up any grain? Have I messed something up here? Hmm. Let's have a look at this. Manage the line. What went wrong here? Full load all. Loading grain, yes. And then up here. Unloading and loading, yes. Perhaps if we change that to that, I don't know. Or perhaps even if we just have this as a three minute stop. Load if available. I'm not entirely sure why none of our ships picked up any grain. Let's keep an eye on this one. We'll keep that pinned and we'll see what this one does when it gets here. Because that is concerning because absolutely none of the ships have picked anything up there as we can see. Now these are cargo capable. We saw that in the ship selection screen so it's not that. Anyway, while we keep that open, let's just continue these tracks. So there we go. At this point we want to start heading just a little bit to the right towards Nuneaton as we're looking at it now. 
while maintaining as high a speed as possible, 186. Because we may also have a line that heads to the left into Market Raisin. Okay, why did you miss that port entirely? Why are you heading to Yoxel Distillery? Portis Grain, there we go, yeah. I don't know why they all decided to skip the first stop. Have I? Did I mess up the ordering? No, Portis Head Grain Port number one. That is very strange. Well, that's just wasted a lot of time and money there, but never mind. And now that's caused these two ships to bunch up too closely together, as we can see. So I think what we'll do is at this line here, this stop, this port, manage the line and set a maximum weight, sorry, a maximum wait time of five minutes. No. Four minutes. No, three minutes. Three minutes and three minutes. Three minutes, ten, three minutes. There we go. Obviously, the reason we've gone for three minutes is because we have four ships. There's 12 minutes in a year in game. Four by three is 12. So that should help them space out. In theory. Or not. We'll see what happens. Anyway, let's just finish building this track and train line over to Nuneaton. Now, we don't want to start heading down because we're going to need a bridge at this point, aren't we? Over the river. And we want a bridge that still maintains passability, accessibility for our ships on this stretch of the water. So if we come in like that and that, now that's going to be quite shallow, isn't it? And that doesn't keep the water navigable. We could put a little, but that's still, look, it looks too low just doesn't look right so what we're gonna have to do is take this back all the way back and start climbing a little bit sooner to give us more clearance over the top of our ships because while the ships would pass under there as we saw it just wouldn't look right would it so if we rise up from 13 meters to say 16 meters so that's climbing by three meters which is over a distance of 265 meters so it's, that's obviously under a one in ten gradient and then from here well we don't want that bridge let's see can we see anything nice and fancy here how about this one although for now we do want earthworks at this point Yes, that'll do. So there is slowdown on that curvature there. In fact, there's probably too much slowdown. There's no need to drop 50 miles an hour off there when we can just lay the tracks in a little bit better. Now, if you keep this height, so that's going from 16 to 17, apparently. Let's change the bridge type again to this one. Or, well, the earthworks are now. 186 miles per hour. That's a lot better. And now, straight over the top with this bridge type, and we'll have that. How does that look? Ooh, yes, that just clears. That's fine. What we'll do, we'll just shorten that off a little bit to say there. So that's 140 miles per hour. Does it tell us the box? No, it does not give us the maximum speed, unfortunately. Let's go all the way across. 112 miles per hour, so in fact it is faster than the default bridge, so we'll use that. And it does look the part as well. Happy enough with that. And then at this point we don't want bridge, we want earthworks. And you can start heading down slowly. So shall we say 17 to 14 metres and stretch it out as far as we can. Again, we want to maintain our speed here. 186. We've come in at a nice angle here because we're going to naturally bypass the food processing plant, which is great. And then at this bit, let the game decide the elevation. Keep it as straight as we can. 
So that's going from 11 to 27. Okay, let's stretch that out even further then. That's quite an elevation change, isn't it? But I think our trains... In fact, what happens if we select that? Is that one whole almighty tunnel? Yes, it is, and we are quite far underground there, so we, knew, we need to start rising. There's nothing we can do about that. Yeah, we'll have that. It's quite high, but obviously no needing is elevated against the level of the water, the river's edge, so we're going to have to accept it. Although what we could have done is not drop down as far after the bridge, because I guess we're dropping down, and then, yes, we are. Okay, let's, let's do all this again. Okay, so let's do this again. And let's go from the height of the bridge straight through to here. How's the speed? Speed is good. Let's have earthworks there, please. Although we want to be heading a little bit further on to the left, but we want to be mindful of this road here. Obviously, we can relay the road. That's better. Yes, that's a lot better. I'm happy with that. We've probably gone too... F In fact, no, we, we we may have gone just a little bit too far there because we want to start turning in towards the Eton for the station. Now, as I said, we don't want our station facing the same direction as our tracks currently because we want to make sure we have room for ex you know expansion up towards Blythe and then down this way rather than having a very tight radius out and then having to deal with this tiny bit of space here. So what we will do is we'll have the station, let's put it down now as a marker. Building size 2, tracks will just have 2 for now, high speed yes. And if we have it situated something like that. Okay, that's going to be very tight. We might have to redo all of that. How about if we had it here? That would be a tight turn in. Let's have a look. And we've got the issue of the road to deal with as well. What's bringing in our our food into Nuneaton? How about if we had it sort of like that? That still gives us room to head up towards Blythe and uh, Bakewell and the like, so the train line between these two is pretty pretty uh, unnecessary I think we could probably use trams for that and this we'll see what sort of okay let's just do it this way instead so the inner track is a little bit slower as we saw there 185 but I'm not going to redo it all just for the sake of one mile per hour and if we take that back to there, and then this should give us a much nicer connection. Yep, take that. And like that, there we go. And now we can have, what do we have here? The AE47, an electric train. 62 miles per hour. A contender for some of our freight lines, perhaps. But for now, let's finish this off. We'll put the diamond in. That's all good. And then we can do the signals. And we'll use the auto signal. Yes, one way, yes. We'll say 300 meters. And we'll go there. And that's done all of that for us nicely. And then we'll go... Do we have a junction here? We do. So we don't want to signal too short and risk blocking the junction. So this one we'll set... Here just to fill it all out and then we can manually put a clearing signal in around there and we might need to manually put a clearing signal in oh no that should be okay but we will put a final stopping signal there and then we'll do the usual thing before our diamond and have some two-way signals there to allow our trains to pull forward Need to do some terrain work here, so let's do that quickly. Brush size, there we go. Just quickly take the edge off of all of that. And then we want to get this all connected into Nuneaton. 
and then we can think about setting up a passenger line but i think we'll leave that for the next episode because this has taken quite a while Let's just quickly just smooth some of that off and i don't want to have too many episodes that are running into the uh, 45 or 50 minute mark so we'll keep it at that i believe before we do go let's just quickly check our new line that we put down its balance is going to be awful for now because we had three ships run all the way up here with no cargo loaded whatsoever which is very unfortunate however they are all now bringing cargo with them as we can see so we have some alcohol waiting which is good so we've started production everything's going well uh the current line finances for this shipping line is probably a false indicator and it should look a lot better once things work as intended because clearly they weren't there initially so let's hop on board in fact should we jump on one of the ships have a quick sail up the river as our little uh, little outro perhaps we'll go for this ship here let's just pause the progression so we don't unlock anything during the outro and we'll have a little sail down the river well, let's get into a nice position. Perhaps we'll join the captain on the bridge. Hello, Skip. Oh, hello. Oh. Nice little chair there. Anyway, let's get out. In fact, no, let's go a bit lower. Pressing all the wrong keys there. There we go. That's quite nice. And we'll look off towards the left. Then we'll see Portishead and West Ham as we around the bend. All that remains for me to say is, as always, ladies and gentlemen, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now.